What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us today. Before we jump into the message, we wanted to let you know that we have a ton of great content for the whole family. We have great videos for your small children in the Little Linkland section, for your kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. We'd love to be a blessing to your whole family, so check out these videos when you can. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. Now, let's get started. Father, I, I pray that I shrink and you magnify. Father, I minimize, you expand. I pray for all of the spirit and none of the flesh. And I pray, Father, my preaching and teaching be not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and your power, so that the faith of the people stand not in the wisdom of man, but in the wisdom of our everlasting Father God. It's in the mighty master's marvelous name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. And if you agree with that prayer you said, amen. amen. So I normally flow at a pretty fast pace, right? So do yourself a good favor. Go to you version and all my notes and all the scriptures are there. Amen. I, I took good pains to make sure that I gave you, I was liberal in giving you a lot of my notes. You also can go to linked up our app and they'll be there as well. Okay. All right. The title of this message is, are you lost? Here's my intro. You know, the coronavirus and all these other viruses, you know, with extreme violence we've seen lately because of the pandemic, we've had now the lifestyle and job style changes, national personal debt is looming all over, you know, marriage is under attack, families under siege, uh, strained relationships, rampant corruption in business and in politics have all provoked what I call unwarranted fear, egregious agitation, and an increasing sense of comprehension, right, in today's world. Pressure is prevalent everywhere. So what are you to do? I have some questions. Do you give up? You can answer. Do you throw in the towel? Do you, do you get all knee knocking and say, devil, I give? Right. You didn't say it affirmative enough, so let me say it for you. No, no, and no. Why? Because you have a deliverer, and his name is Jesus, and he came to set whatever's wrong in your life right. His name means Savior, right? So if you don't receive him as such, if you reject him and don't see him as your Savior, obviously you cannot be saved. Over the course of the last four or five weeks or so, Pastor Gregory taught on the uh, importance of increasing your power and authority in Jesus. Minister Bernard came back and showed that you were made for this moment and your guaranteed victory through Jesus. Minister Kimberly then proved that by love, the love of Jesus, you are the salt and the light to the world. I think somebody's trying to tell us something. Some of you have tried everything, and you've tried it with strong conviction, except Jesus. Today is that day that you say, and you give an affirmative yes, and exclusively become his. It is one thing to be lost. It's a far greater thing to stay lost. Amen? Turn with me to John chapter 3. I want to read verses 16 through 18 out of the message. And it reads this way. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again, Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust in him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind Son of God when introduced to him. And let the church say, Amen. because we're going to introduce him to you today. 
Now, the way the Lord normally gives me my messages, I normally get three points. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. All right, guess how many points I have today? Well, that wasn't a trick question. I mean, that should have been easy. Three. <laughs> First point is this. God so loved, the, loved you. I'm sorry. God so loved you, he sent you a personal love letter. Amen. Now, my wife and I have been together for a few years. And uh, I, I'm actually an affectionate guy. And I'm a giver. And I show her love in many, many, many ways. But sometimes I feel that what I'm doing is not cutting the mustard. It's not getting the job done. And when it happens, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an old-fashioned guy. I do some things still. I still like writing checks. Amen. You know, that, that's me. And, and, and when I felt this way, it was not by admission of her as the receiver, it was by admission of me as the giver, All right? So I, I'm, I'm not big on texting, you know, when it's a matter of the heart, because I don't even know all the acronyms. You know, I, I put something in the wrong order and I just jack up the whole marriage, right? <laughs> like, literally, I go to her and she, I, what does this mean? And, and I don't want to play music because the words are from somebody else's heart. Right? So what did I do? I sent her a love letter. I sat down, wrote the love letter, put it in the mail, you know, and, and it's not because I was in the doghouse. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. It's from my heart. So I sent her a love letter. She finally got it and, you know, she melted and she, when she read it and <laughs> that love letter was some seed. And that seed produced a harvest. I'm not talking 30. I'm not talking 60. I'm talking a hundredfold. And let the married men say, come on, brothers. The best love letters ever written were penned by inspiration of God. They span from Genesis to Revelation, right? We're talking about the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. And these love letters were written to you, but not about you. They're about the Father's love for you, yes. right? They contain his accounts of events, thoughts, observations, wisdom, direction. His love letters are God-breathed, and we know this according to 2 Timothy 3.16. God-breathed, they're good for teaching and correcting and training us up in righteousness so that we can go out and reflect Jesus to all mankind. Now, why did, why did you think God took the time to write love letters? And why did I take the time to write a love letter? Well, I have three reasons. First, written words capture the core spirit and soul of the writer's heart. Secondly, for the intended target, it's beneficial, it's advantageous, it's even therapeutic. Thirdly, its intentionality is authentic, gripping, and trustworthy in every way. And as such, get this, it enables the reader to examine themselves in the light of the writer's love. Amen. Think about this for a second, self-examination. So if you follow me on uh, version, you'll see that I have 13 scriptures listed, 13 love letters listed. So if I had to condense those love letters and read God's letter to you, this is how it would sound. So this is God's love letter to you. To you, my love and my friend, I made you. So when I write that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, know that my love letter is intentional, authentic, and trustworthy. I demonstrated my outstanding love for you when I sent my only begotten son. If you believe in him with your heart and confess with your mouth, you will spend eternity with me. My son, your savior Jesus, will shoulder your burdens and give you rest. Yes. Through him, you can live an abundant life because he is backed by my power and my plans to give you a future and a hope. I put you first. I love you so much that even heavenly hosts and angels are jealous of you. 
So when you humble yourself and repent, I will forgive your sins and heal your lands. I will deliver your soul from death, your, your eyes from tears, and your feet from falling. It's my absolute pleasure to turn your weaknesses into strengths. My peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and give you a steady, level mind. And above all, beloved, I have given you everything you need to prosper and to be in good health. And this love letter to you is signed, with all my love, God, your Supreme Father. Yay, God got it like that. <laughs> Second point, examine your heart in the light of God's love. All right, so much today, I want to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. During that time, you know, the people were kind of discouraged because they faced un an uncertain future. They were held captive by their circumstances, extenuating circumstances, what I, said, what I have in writing. And they faced difficult challenges, okay? So let me read Isaiah 55, chapter 55, verses 3 through 6. Incline your ear and come to me. Here and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Now, we're going to break down each one of those lines a little bit later. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for you. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen? Amen. Incline your ear. Now, whoever delights in the Lord and delights in these love letters will intentionally lean their ear towards what God has to say. Now, that kind of explains to me why two people will hear the same message, right? One will benefit and the other will not. Uh -huh. The one that benefits catches it, keeps the message. The one that does not benefit, it flowed in one ear and it flowed out the other. The one that does not benefit did not lean their ear unto the Lord. 1 John 2, 24 through 25, the passion reads this way. So you must be sure to keep the message burning in your hearts. That is the message of life you heard from the beginning. Jesus Christ is the message of life. If you do, you will always be living in close fellowship with the Son and with the Father. Verse 25. And he himself has promised us the never-ending life of ages to come. That sounds like a covenant. Yes. So inclining your ear is really like a, a euphemism, meaning to lean unto the Lord's wisdom and understanding. Relationship is everything, right? And, and, and the message of life in this scripture is actually Jesus Christ. Now, It is incumbent upon you when you're building a relationship with something that is important to you and someone that is important to you for you to be the aggressor. You have to crave this the fellowship with the Lord and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You ever crave for something that you just had to have? I'm talking food that you had to have. <laughs> I want to make that plain. You thought about it all day. You get off from work, right? You drive an hour, hour and a half to do what you have to do to take care of that craving. For me, it's honey buns and ice cream. <laughs> There's a certain honey bun that I will drive to find. I'll take that honey bun, I get home, y'all call them pans, I put that bad boy in the skillet. <laughs> I put some butter in the skillet. I saute that honey bun, 
I flip it a couple of times, get it just right. I put it in, I, you ever see one of those big Jethro Bodine bowls? <laughs> Pop it in the bowl. Two scoops, she got it, two scoops of homemade vanilla bluebell ice cream. The rest is history. <laughs> so that's the same type of craving we should have for Jesus, the Father, and his love letters. See, you, you can't wait to fellowship with him because, again, relationship is everything. Matter of fact, the, the first, oh, Lord, the first... Um, First pillar of our vision is to connect to God. And connect to God, why? All right, because that's a connection you never want to break. That's a connection you never want to step away from. That's a connection that's too vital. That's a connection that is too phenomenal. Amen? All right, so, so let me get to the next one. Here and your soul shall live. Right? We know we get pressure on all sides. You know, pressure starts in the kindergarten all the way up to the senior citizen home. Pressure comes from everywhere. Because the enemy has mastered sneak attacks. So that begs the question, what's the state of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions? You're feeling loss, anger, fear, bitterness, guilt, rage. There's nothing glorious about those words I just said. They don't bring God glory. They don't bring you glory. Matter of fact, Jesus, the scripture says, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil because those are works of the enemy. But Jesus can't destroy the works if you won't let him. Hmm? Read the love letters. Wash your heart with the word. Receive the healing that belongs to you. Receive the restoration that belongs to you. Receive above all, above all eternity life that belongs to you. But you have to be aggressive and you have to go get it. The next one. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. See, for the one who inclines their ear, God promises an everlasting covenant. Right? And we know Isaiah is looking back. Uh, this phone. Uh, uh. And we know Isaiah is looking towards the future, and he's looking towards the covenant, the New Testament covenant with Jesus, because the scripture says, the love letter here says, I will make. Not that I made, not that it is, right? And we know that uh, uh, God promised David that his throne would last forever. And Jesus is descended through the bloodline of David. Yes. And of Jesus' government, there is no end. He's the king of kings and the lords of lords. Let's talk mercies. Turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3. I want to read 22 through 24. It reads this way. It is of the Lord's mercies, with an S, that we're not consumed, because his compassions, with an S, fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy Faithfulness. Yes. Say that with me. Great is thy faithfulness. Well, y'all sound kind of good. One more time. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Then verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore I will hope in him. Amen. Now we know God showed David great mercy, right? He spared him when he was on the run from King Saul. David was an adulterer. David was a murderer. And God extended mercy to him. Now, I'm going to say something that may not sit well with some of you, but I'm going to say it anyway. The same mercy that you and I need, Jesus needed. He who knew sin was made sin, All right? So without mercy, sin without mercy equals judgment. And not any type of judgment, what I call bare-knuckle judgment. Now, I'd rather have mercy than to have bare knuckle judgment. God's mercy is plentiful. We just read that, right? Fresh and new every day. We all need mercy and we all need to give mercy. 
Even though God's mercy is plentiful, don't play God for a fool. See, see, some of us, remember the children of, of uh, Israel with that manna that came down? They tried to store up the manna, and God said, no, you can't store this up because you need me every single day. Well, a lot of us think we can store up mercy we didn't use the day before. Like we got a mercy card, and you load it up on the mercy card, and when things are right for you, not when God wants to extend mercy, when you want God to extend mercy, pot out, here's my card. Pot out, here's my card. You premeditate that sin. You orchestrate that sin. You execute that sin. You knew it was wrong from the beginning. And then you tell uh, God later, I'm not sure what happened. I just fell into it. Hey, God, here's my mercy card, right? No. We have to treat God and the things of God correctly and properly. That's a part of being holy and a part of being righteous. My last point is this. Relationship is everything. In separation, Jesus' love for you never hesitates. Remember Isaiah 55, 6 said, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Now, every time I've heard this love letter over the years, it's given me room to pause. It's kind of like a Selah moment, and I'll tell you why. Many of the love letters tell us to seek the Lord, right? Matthew 7, seeking you will find. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew, uh, Luke 11, he who seeks will find. Second part of that is many love letters tell us to call upon the Lord. Second Timothy 2, call on the Lord from, your, from a pure heart. Acts 2, call on the Lord, name of the Lord and be saved. Ephesians 4.4, 4. you were called to one hope. Mm-hmm. Now notice what is said in Isaiah. Seek while he may be found. While he may be found. Well, Lord, are you lost? Call while he is near. While he is near. Well, Lord, have you moved? Did you relocate? The scripture is suggesting that there are times when God cannot be found. Well, isn't he the one that never sleeps and never slumbers? Isn't he the one that's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent? Well, is he here or is he not here? Is he law? Is this a game of hide and seek? Is this a prize? Okay, so let me go look at some more love letters. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, the B portion. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Matthew 28, 20, B portion says this. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And then he capped it by saying, Amen. Hmm. All right, let me read Romans 8, 35 through 39 out of the Passion. Who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? No, for they are all impotent to hinder omnipotent love, all right? Even though it is written all day long, we face death threats for, sake, for your sake, God. We're considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Consider it, didn't say we were slaughtered. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumphed over them all, for God has made us to be more than conquerors and has demonstrated love, or his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with the confidence that there's nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that could weaken his love. Man, if that wasn't enough, now he says this in verse 39. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. Hallelujah. 
That's a deep letter. So we can do, deduce from that there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from God's love, right? But we can be separated, okay? What do you mean, J.W.? I'm going to tell you, okay? How about this? I have two grown children. We, my wife and I always call them good and grown, especially when they know everything, right? Uh, a 42-year-old and a 37-year-old, 43 and a 37-year-old, right? Now, as the father, my love for them never diminishes, but they can do and say, say certain things that separate us from time to time. All right? Don't ask me to help you deal with a problem, and then I deal with it, and then you reject it, or you don't receive it, because I see clearly what the problem is. You are the problem. <laughs> now think about this. I only have two children. God has eight billion with a B. Relationships rise and fall with authentic and honest communication. Well, what do you mean? Tough love is often not received, especially when the two engage in the conversation on different maturity levels, right? One will feel injured and the other will feel slighted. One is pointing out ways to improve, saying, thinking if you dare to listen to what I'm saying, says it to the other, right? The other sees it as an insult or an injury, and then they're saying, how dare you even to say what you're thinking? See, we say that, that the truth hurts. Well, the truth never hurts. Well, the truth never changes. People change the truth. People lie about the truth, and therein lies the hurt. See, it's okay for you to go down somebody else's street and read them their mail. But you want to get all kind of complexities and complications when they take you down your street and read you your mail. John 10, 29, reads this way. My Father, which gave them me, Jesus talking, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. One of our staff members, Nas, uh, who's the director of social media, uh, had a baby recently, a beautiful baby, Keith Ezekiel. Now, you couldn't snatch Keith Ezekiel out of Nas's hands, but Keith Ezekiel can wiggle out, he can maneuver out. He can jump out. We do the same thing to God. He's, he says nothing can, devil can't pluck you out of his hands, but you can wiggle out. You can maneuver out. You can jump out. So it's not a question from you to God asking him, are you lost? It's the question from God to you asking you, why are you lost? So let me give you some examples of how we create loss and separation. Here's one. When you turn your heart away from Jesus and will not hear him, and I'm pointing to these two right here, or will not hear from his messengers. I thought that was deep. Okay. <laughs> So turn your heart away from Jesus is rejecting wisdom and truth. And we know Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. So when we, you reject truth, you reject Jesus. Now let me tell you what Jesus says in Matthew 13, 11 through 15, the passage. It reads this way. He explained, you've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom. But they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding they think they have will be taken from them. Right? Did they catch it? Did they keep it? No. It'll be taken from them. That's why I teach the people using parables because they think they're looking for truth, yet because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. Although they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand the a thing I say. 
They look and pretend to see, but their hearts, the eyes of their hearts are closed in verse 15. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and are hard of hearing. And they have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear and open their minds to understand. Then they would turn to me and guess what? I would instantly heal them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying, you know, to the faithful, he speaks in parables. But there are those, you know, that, that it goes in one ear, goes out the other. They don't lean to him, and they'd rather prefer to walk in darkness. They see but do not perceive. They hear but do not understand. And their reason is this, right? They're not interested in really in comprehending and understanding what the Lord has to say. Their hearts are closed. You guys remember the gospel where Jesus went to his own hometown, right? And he could do, uh, the Bible says he could do not many miracles, uh-huh. but only heal a few people. That's right. You ever thought about that? Do you know if you really studied the gospels, he spent more time in his hometown than any other city? And it's not by Jesus's uh, part, right? He doesn't change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. It is the people, their hearts were closed. And because their hearts were closed, unbelief took over. So open your heart, the eyes of your heart. Purify your heart. Read the love letters and keep your heart open for Jesus in all seasons. Amen? Amen. Let me read to you Matthew from the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. So God places a heavy price tag on a pure heart. Here's another one why we create loss ourselves, while we wiggle out, jump out, or step out of his hand. When you mock the Lord by rejecting his advice. Now, mocking the Lord sounds like some real strong language. You're saying, I'm not mocking the Lord. I would never mock the Lord. Okay, let me read this to you then. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 through 26, and then I'm going to read 29 through 31. And this is wisdom speaking. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded, because you disdained all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. Verse 29. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Then verse 31. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. And let me give you a summary of this love letter. All right. Refusal of wisdom's call. Rejection of wisdom's counsel. Denial. Denial of wisdom's correction. Hatred of wisdom's knowledge. And the end result is you reap the fruit of your own way. There's God's wisdom, which is superior. There's man's wisdom, which is inferior. But I want you to see something. It's man's own wisdom which will laugh and mock at the calamity that he brings upon himself. Due to his carelessness, due to his not leaning his ear, due to his closed heart, due to his stepping out of God's hands. And actually, due to him rejecting Jesus, you know, Galatians tells us, whatever man soweth, that also shall he reap. So never trust the inferior over the superior. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 55, 8 says it this way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And here's the last one. When you allow Satan to have free reign. Now, Satan can't bomb rush us. He can try. We're not ignorant of his devices. But here's the true deal. We leave our mouth, our eye, and our mind gates open at times, and he doesn't even have to break in the lock. He just opened the door, and he waltzes right on in. You remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira, right? They lied about some money. Always got to do with money. Lied about some money, and they died right there at the apostles' feet. Why did they lie? Real quickly, uh, Acts 5.3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? 
And he backs it up in verse 4. The B portion says, why hast thou convinced, I'm sorry, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Judas. You, you, you even hate to hear the name, don't you? Judas. Don't even sound right coming out. Judas. <laughs> I was here to say that to yourself. Judas. You just, ugh. But Judas portrayed Jesus, we know that, right, for filthy lucre, as the scripture, the love letters say, right? So never let the love of money outweigh the love of righteousness. In Luke 22, 3, it tells the story. Then Satan entered Judas. See, Satan entered into Judas, right? Because Judas submitted to Satan's temptation to betray Jesus. That's what happened. When you submit to Satan, you become one with him. Just like when you submit to the Spirit, you submit to Jesus, you become one with him. You make the choice. That's why God gives you free will. So I wonder how many people have submitted and become one to Satan for short-lived, short-term fame, fortune, power, titles, sex. So don't let Satan have free reign. Yield to Jesus and give him total control. Amen? Let me read one more scripture. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, this love letter reflects that superior wisdom we just talked about, right? This is a positive declaration. This is not a wish. This is not a hope, right? You have to believe, right? The believer possesses a resource for victory, and that resource for victory is, it tells you right here. It's the indwelling presence of Jesus. Because of him, you are more than a conqueror. Uh -huh. But you have to rely on the he who is in you and not you yourself. See, overcomers have confidence. They walk in truth and remain convinced that all things will work together for their good. So be an overcomer. Act like an overcomer. Walk like an overcomer. Sound like an overcomer. Tell me, how does an overcomer sound? Did y'all overcome tying your shoestrings this morning? How does the overcomer sound? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, that clock. So here's my conclusion. Godliness is not accidental, but intentional. If you are lost, don't stay lost. Amen. To have a fulfilling walk with God, live victoriously over sin, and have an impact on his name, in the lives of others, you must deliberately, right? You have to be the aggressor. Pursue time with God by being in his love letters, being in his presence, and by praying and meditating on the word. Reflecting on them will, will, and the, well, reflecting and following them will lead you to that flourishing, victorious life that God intends for you. Yeah. Now, this is my challenge. Below, if you're looking at it on the new version or our app, you see the love letter that I read to you earlier at the beginning of this sermon. I'm challenging you to read that love letter three days, not today, because you read it already, not today, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and take a minimum of 15 minutes each time after you read it and be still and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Amen? I pray you got something from this word. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we really have come to the most important time of this message, of this sermon, actually of this day. And I'm going to ask believers to pray, to bow your heads and pray in the spirit, because I actually sensed from the very beginning that there was a, a need in here among the people, and that need, and Jesus sent me down this path for a reason, to talk about open hearts versus closed hearts, people who incline their ear versus those who don't. 
I prove to you that God loves you more than anything ever created, more than anything in the world, more than anything in the universe. And he's saying to you, everything you need to be victorious, everything you need to be successful, everything you need to make things right on your behalf is found in Jesus. Again, nobody moving except those that have been authorized to do so. I, I really truly believe people right now are, are making life and death decisions. Eternal life and death decisions. In a moment, I'm going to give you three invitations. But I, I, just, I just feel that the Spirit needs to do some, some spiritual surgery here for a second. And those who are really in need, you, you'll, you'll feel that scratch on the inside of you. Right? And it's the Holy Spirit saying, don't miss this opportunity. I'm here for you. The doors are open unto you. You're tired of doing things your way. It's time for you to do things my way. I have the best intentions for you, your life, your seed, and everything that surrounds you. So my first invitation, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never asked him to come into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior, that's going to be one of my three invitations. The second of my three invitations will be, you know, life happens. And uh, sometimes we don't make the best decisions. And for some people, you may have walked away from the faith. You may have walked away from the Father. Well, Jesus is, I I'm still here, he says. I'm still here with open arms. So the day you can rededicate your life and come back to me. My third invitation will be, maybe the Holy Spirit has convicted you to make linked up church your church home. Now, we don't steal sheep. We disciple sheep. So if you don't have a church home and the Holy Spirit has convinced you and convicted you that this should be your church home and you want to align with our pastors, I'll give you that inventory as well. I'll give you that uh, invitation, I'm sorry, as well. Okay, I believe the Holy Spirit's done what he needs to do. So if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and you'd like him to be your Lord and your Savior, today is the day, because I want to pray for you. Would you please shoot up your hand right now? Raise your hand high where I can see it. I see that hand. Thank you, sir. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you for your obedience. I see that hand, ma'am. Thank you so much. I see that hand. Thank you so much. I see that hand, yes. For those who, would you put your hands down now, please? For those who want to rededicate their life, you want to come back because you're being welcomed you're being loved back into the arms of the Father. Would you please shoot your hands up high so I can see them as well? I see those hands in the back. I see that hand, sir. And this is an important time. Don't, don't put off for tomorrow what the Lord is convicting you to do today. All right, put those hands down. For those 
who would like linked up to be your church home. You want to join us here and make our pastors your pastors. Would you please raise your hands and lift them high so that I really can see them. Thank you, sir. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. All right, you can put your hands down now. I believe that the Holy Spirit is still doing a work and there's more people that want to get in on this. Don't miss this opportunity. Even those that are watching online, you don't want to miss this opportunity. You can dial linked up to 94000 and follow the prompts on your screen. Or you can say, I sincerely pray that prayer when I pray it in the text itself or online itself. So one more time, if you've never asked the Lord to come into your life and you want him to be your Lord and Savior now, would you please raise your hands? Or if you want to rededicate your life or if you want to join Linked Up Church, now's the time. Please raise your hand and shoot them up high where I can see them. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Thank you for your obedience. I see that hand. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, well, I'm going to do exactly what I said I would do. I'm going to pray for you. All those that raise their hands, would you please stand Make your way to the nearest aisle and come back up here and meet me at the altar. And let's encourage them, linked up. Let's encourage them. Heaven is rejoicing. Surely we can rejoice. Angels are standing up. Yeah, yeah. Mighty men, yeah, yeah. We can do better, linked up. Heaven is rejoicing, we can rejoice. Angels are standing and saluting at attention. Hallelujah. Come on, encourage them. We'll wait for you, come on down. We'll wait for you, come on down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Come on down. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll wait for you. Come on down. Hallelujah. Don't miss this time. Don't let the enemy steal you and steal this time from you. Don't cooperate with him and jump out of the hands of the Father. He loves you. He wants you to come here. He wants you to join his family. Glory to God. I love to see families. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Now, I saw more hands go up. But I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'm going to say a prayer. And if you get in on this prayer before I'm finished, we'll welcome you. Yes. Yes, glory. See, sometimes the person to your left or the person to your right might need some encouragement, might need a little nudge. So if the Spirit's convicting you, and you see somebody and you, you'd be happy to walk down to the front with him, look to your left and look to your right. And be led. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Yeah! Yeah! Glory! 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 Come on now! We can do better than that linked up! Now, 
Now, if I could, look up here at me for a second. Whew. If I could, and I didn't think I would hurt myself, I'd be doing cartwheels up here. Hallelujah. That's how happy we are when brothers and sisters come together. Because we're now all in the same family. Amen. So put your hand, if you would, on, the, on your heart and raise one hand to heaven. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of Christ. I believe that he died, rose from the grave, and he's alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I confess with my mouth, what I believe in my heart, I am right now born again and in right standing with God and all my sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So if you will, if you would look to my left, your right, if you'll follow that young lady with the Bible, we want to take you somewhere and minister to the exact need that you came down front for. So if you will, would you please follow them? Won't take long. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.